Hey there, fellow grad student. Here's a quiz on family therapy. Question one. You know that when clients are unable or unwilling to perform assigned family roles, the fees the experience A. Stress disequilibrium B. Recognition and communication C. Personal and political advocacy Or is it D. Acceptance? The answer is A. Stress and disequilibrium when members are unable or unwilling to perform assigned roles, the family experiences stress. For the health of the family, symptoms not only family members, but also their relationships, their communication with one another, and their interaction with the environmental roles often must be negotiated in other than stereotyped ways. When the roles are not rec negotiated satisfactorily, family disequilibrium results. Not following assigned family roles does not result in recognition, communication, advocacy, or acceptance. Question two. A patient with bipolar disorder lives with family and discontinues taking medication when he begins to feel symptoms are under control. Family members express their concern to the client's therapist whenever they realize he's off his meds again. You understand that within the client's family, each person's behavior is contingent on what? Contingent on and reflects characteristics of client's family, or B, affects the behavior of others, C, is affected by the functionality of the group, or is it D, is reflective of the client's mental illness? The answer is B. It affects the behavior of others. Whenever they are functional or dysfunctional, families have certain characteristics and dynamics. In a family, each person's behavior is contingent on and affects the behavior of others. Family members' behavior is not necessarily reflective of the client's mental illness. Each family member's behavior affects the behavior of others, which may, in turn, reflect the characteristics of the family as a whole. The functionality of the group does not address the family relationships. Question three. For the last three generations, the men in the family have worked in logging. The younger son wants to go to college and become a marine biologist. His parents tell him that logging is what our family does and refuses to discuss the issue. The son chooses to pursue employment in logging rather than upset his parents' desire for their son. This family is experiencing what? A. Enmeshment, B. Pseudo hostility, or is it C. Pseudo mutuality, or D. Schism? The answer is C. Pseudo mutuality. A family in which pseudo mutuality occurs experiences persistent sameness in the structuring of roles, insistence on the desirability and appropriateness of family roles and structures an intense concern over deviations from the role structure or emerging autonomy, and it also requires its members to give up their sense of personal identity. The family is not exhibiting pseudo-hostility in which there is a chronic conflict, remoteness, or denial to negate hostility. Enmeshed families have diffuse boundaries. In schismatic families, adult partners devalue and undercut each other. Question 4. The nurse and student taking care of a client in the mental health clinic learns through assessment that the client's wife insisted he admit himself into the clinic even though his wife is the one with the documented history of mental illness. The client states, I just want her to be happy. The nurse and student suspects that the client's relationship with his wife may be A. Enmeshed B. Disengaged C. Hostile or D. Skewed the answer is D, skewed. Families in which one mate is severely dysfunctional are called skewed families. The other mate, who is usually aware of the dysfunction of the partner, assumes a passive, peacemaking, submissive stance to preserve the relationship. The couple's relationship does not appear to present with the other three options. Question 5. The nurse is working with a family in the process of a divorce. The parents are pressuring the children to decide which parent to live with after the divorce. The children are conflicted because they love both parents equally and want the family to stay together. 
This is an example of what? A. A schismatic family. A B. A skewed family. C. Hostile family. Or D. A disengaged family. The answer is A. A schismatic family. So families in which the children are forced to join one or the other camp of two warring spouses or adult caretakers are called a schismatic families. The constant fighting in these families is most likely a defense against intimacy or closeness. The family does not appear skewed, disengaged, or hostile. Question 6. A family with ADHD is referred to the nurse practitioner for family therapy. The father and mother are out of the country and have been out of touch for three months. The child's older sister has assumed the role of parenting her younger sibling. This is an example of a A. Disengaged family B. An enmeshed family C. A skewed family or D. A schismatic family The answer is A. A disengaged family So in disengaged families, family members seem oblivious to the effects of their action on one another. They are unresponsive and unconnected to each other. Structure order or authority in the family may be weak or even non-existent. In these families, a child often assumes the parental role. Question 7. The nursing student knows that involved families with clients' treatment is an important aspect of the family nursing. Certain biases, such as believing families are responsible for the client's mental health, prevents what? Is it A, social interaction and violates family rights? B, increases their production? C, unblocking their destruction? Or is it D, increasing their reuptake? The answer is A, social interaction and violates family rights. So, assessing and intervening with families of clients is an essential role in nursing. Unfortunately, some mental health care professionals still have a bias against family involvement. This bias is a remnant of a now discredited theories that poor parenting and dysfunctional family interaction patterns give rise to mental illness. A related bias is the belief that if families cause that families cause schizophrenia, then families' contact with the client should be limited for the client's sake. Patients violating family rights. This bias prevents social interaction with the family members that might serve as normalizing force by confronting clients with the reality. These biases do not produce, do not reproduce any of these negative perceptions, negative client behavior, or hope, or support, or happiness. Question eight. You know that because people with mental illness continue to be ostracized by mainstream society, Families must cope with the burden of what? Is it A, dementia, B, shame, C, isolation, or D, stigma? The answer is stigma, D. So family burden, that refers to the difficulties and responsibilities of family members who assume a caretaking function for the relatives with a psychiatric disability. Stigma is one example of a family burden. Other family burdens reported must often are most often are financial strain, violence in the household, reductions in the physical and mental health of the family caregivers, disruption of family routines, worry about the future, the mental health system itself as a stressor, and feeling overwhelmed or unable to cope. Isolation is more of an issue with the person with mental illness than the family. Dementia and shame, that's not considered a family burden. Question 9. When collecting family interaction interactional data, you know to ask what? Is it A, uh, how do the actions of your family worsen your symptoms of schizophrenia? B, since you have been in the hospital, who's been taking care of your children? C, how often do you shop for nutritional items for your family Or is it D, what do you buy when you shop at the local market? The answer is B, since you've been in the hospital, who's taking care of your children? So family interactional data is probably the most complex data to obtain. 
It is important to determine family alliances and family supports. Information about shopping habits is not part of the interactional data, implying that the family causes or affects the client's mental illness. That reflects the nurse's bias. Question 10. The family nurse therapist, in an effort to learn more about details about family patterns and interactions over time, may use what? A. The psychiatrist's progress note. B. Anecdotes from family and friends. C. Police reports. Or D. A genogram. The answer is D, a genogram. From the families, from the, from the study of families in detail, it becomes apparent that the patterns are spread over generations. The timeline or the genogram is highly effective as a visual representation of family patterns from one generation to the next. The other choices have not been proven effective in soliciting information about multi-generational patterns. Question 11. Which of the following is a grassroots self-help support organization of families, friends, and clients with severe mental illness? Is it A, the National Institute of Mental Health? B, American Mental Health Association? C, a mental health clinic? Or D, National Alliance on Mental Illness? The answer is D, National Alliance on Mental Illness, NEMI. The National Alliance of Mental Illness is a grassroots self-help advocacy and supports organizations of families, consumers, and friends of people with severe mental disorders. NAMI provides several services to families and consumers, including general information on mental disorders, psychiatric medications, and mental health policy positions. Referral to state and local affiliates, and it also supports groups throughout the country. Gosh, it also supports from trained volunteers, consumers, and family members who know what it's like to have a mental disorder or family members with a mental disorder. Last question, 12. Which of the following behaviors indicate that the family therapy has been effective and can be terminated? A. Family members are able to give feedback to others, telling them how they appear. B. Family members are able to identify faults and failures of others, telling them how to act better. Or is it C. Family members are able to give praise and criticism in equal measures. Or D. Family members are able to identify problems with communication. The answer is A. Family members, they're able to give feedback to others, telling them how to appear. So termination in the family therapy occurs in a flexible way, helping families achieve realistic goals, thus ending therapy with a feeling of accomplishment. The ability to give feedback to each other in a conservative manner is a sign of a healthy family. The ability to identify problems with communication is an early goal of therapy. Identifying faults and failures of others is not the focus of family therapy. Giving praise and criticism in equal measures is not a goal of family therapy either. And also, it does not indicate the need for termination. All right. Thanks for staying with us. Please like, follow, and share.